My name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 288. Please turn to it. Page number 288. The very first problem that we see there are on page number 288, number 141. Let's see what it has to say. Number 141 tells us that our total expenditure, our total expenditure, we are told, are equal to $100,000 plus 5% of revenue. Our total expenditure is $100,000 plus 5% of revenue. We are also told that we made a profit. We made a profit. We are told that the company made a profit, which in, which in turn of course implies, which in turn of course implies that if that's the case, then their revenue must have been more than their expenses. The question is very simple. The question is, did they, did we sell, did we sell more than twenty one thousand units? Did we sell more than twenty one thousand units? Very straightforward. Very simple questions. Let's see what they tell us. In the first statement, we are told. In the first statement, we are told that the revenue was more than twenty-one thousand dollars. Revenue was more than, rather, it was more than one hundred and ten thousand dollars. The revenue was more than one hundred and ten thousand dollars. Is that enough? Simply knowing that the revenue was more than $110,000, is that enough? Does that enable us to ascertain whether or not they sold more than 21,000 unit? Answer of course is no. What is missing here is the price per unit. We do not know what the price is. We need to know the price per unit. What is the price per unit? For example, let's pretend, let's pretend they're telling us the revenue is more than $110,000. Let's pretend that the revenue was $120,000. Let's pretend the revenue was $120,000. Well, one possibility, if you want to look at the extreme scenario, one possibility is that the price per unit, the price was $120,000 per unit, in which case they only sold one unit. And they would have a revenue of one hundred twenty. You get the idea, I'm being silly here. Another possibility is just the opposite. Maybe they sold 120,000 units at price of one dollar per unit. If they sold it for one dollar per unit, they must have sold 120,000 dollars, 120,000 units. So in this scenario, the question was, did they sell more than 21,000 units? Well, if they, sold it, if they sold it for one dollar per unit, then of course they must have sold 120,000 units. And yes, they did sell more than 21,000 units. In this scenario, no, they did not. They only sold one unit. They made one unit, and they sold that one unit for 120,000 dollars, and that's it. This is not enough. This is not enough for us to ascertain whether or not they sold more than 21,000 units. Statement 1 does not do the job. A, D, B, C, E. A, D, B, C, E. Now that we established that the first statement by itself is not enough, we know now, answer cannot be A or D. It would have to be either B, C or E. Let's look at the second statement. In the second statement, they go on to tell us that. In the second statement, they go on to tell us that the revenue per unit, revenue per unit, was five dollars. Or well, revenue per unit is just an awkward way of saying price. Price per unit. So now we know they're selling it for five dollars per unit. The question is, is that enough information for us to figure out whether or not they sold more than twenty-one thousand units? Let's find out, shall we? question again is same. The question is same as before. Was N more than 21,000? 
That's the, that's what we're trying to answer. Well, again, let's pretend they're looking for they're looking for what did they sell more than twenty one thousand units? Let's use twenty one thousand units as our demarcation. Let's pretend. Let's pretend that n was exactly twenty one thousand. If they sold exactly twenty one thousand unit at five dollars per unit, then their revenue, their revenue must have been five dollars per unit times twenty one thousand units. Five times twenty would have been hundred thousand dollars. This is hundred and five thousand dollars. Let's find out what our what our expenses would be in this scenario. In this scenario, what would their expenses be? For expenses, we are told is hundred thousand dollars plus five percent of the revenue. For five percent of revenue, revenue we know is hundred and five thousand dollars. If we are selling it for five dollars per unit, then we sold twenty. If we're going to pretend that we sold twenty-one thousand unit, our revenue is hundred and five thousand dollars. So our expenses are going to be hundred thousand dollars plus. 5% of our revenue, 5% of 105,000. Well, 105,000, the 10% of 105,000 is simply 105,000, which you just drop out a zero, is $10,500 is the 10%. 10,500 is 10% 10 of 105,000, therefore 5% would be half of that amount, which is 5,250. 5,250 plus 100,000. So we end up with a total of 105,250. As you can see, as you can see in this scenario, in this scenario, pretending that our, that pretending that we sold 21,000 unit, and that scenario, our expenses are more than our revenue. Here, our expenses are more than our revenue. And this implies that we made a loss. We had a loss. But the question clearly tells us that we made a profit. Hence, this implies that since at 21,000 units we made a loss, that implies that we must have sold more than 21,000 units. We have to sell a little bit more than, just a little bit more. We are only 250 off. You see, this is 105,000, the revenue of 105,000, the expenses of 105,250. We have to sell just a little bit more than just a little bit more than 21,000 units to break even, and then after that we'll make a profit. So the question was, did we sell more than 21,000 units? The answer is, we must have sold more than 21,000 units because at 21,000 units we are making a loss. Second statement does the job. Second statement does the job. We must have sold more than 21,000 units. The answer is B. The answer is B. Let's move on to the next one. Number 142. Number 142. Now listen, I'm debating something. I'm debating something. This is not something that you want to do in the real exam, obviously. This will be a damn silly thing to do the real exam. Because nobody is asking us for the break-even point. But if you're curious, if you're interested in learning, just purely for learning purposes, would you like to figure out their break-even point? How many units do they have to make exactly in order for in order for them to break even? Are you interested? Let's do that just for learning purposes. This is an extra stuff. Nobody's asking us for that, but let's just do it for learning purposes. So if you want to, this is a break-even analysis. So if you want to break even. If you want to break even, then you of course your revenue has to equal exactly to your expenses. The revenue, we are told, is five dollars per unit. So its revenue is five times the number of quantity that we sold. That's how we figure out the revenue. The expenses we are told is one hundred thousand plus five percent of the revenue. Five percent of revenue. Tell you what, for the time being, for the time being, let's leave this revenue as revenue so that we have R on both sides. So here we have 5% of R, here we have R. So we solve for the R, we end up with 0.95R equals 100,000, which means R equals 100 over 0.95.
This is getting a little bit more complicated. Nobody's asking us for it. This is, we are just doing it for learning purposes, as I said already three times. And of course, revenue. Revenue, how do we figure out the revenue? The revenue is simply price times the quantity. The price we know is $5, and quantity we pretend it is N. So R equals 5 times N, which means the number of units that we try to solve for is simply 100 divided by 0.95 times 5. We get the 5, put it here. 5 times n is our revenue. R. Our revenue. That's it. We just have to solve for this thing. Now, I see I see 0.95 at the bottom. I don't like dealing with decimals. Let's get rid of this 0.95 by multiplying the top and the bottom by 100. And when, when we do that, when we do that, what we end up here is that n equals to 100 times 100 over 95, you see this 95 times 100 becomes 0.95 times 100 becomes 95. That was the whole bloody point. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. This 5 drops out and this becomes 20. Let's divide top and bottom by 5 again. This becomes 19 and it becomes 20. And what we end up is 20 times 20 which is 400 over 19. 400 over 19, we know 400 over 20, 400 divided by 20 is exactly 20, therefore that leads us to believe that 400 divided by 19, whatever it is, is something more than 20. You see, they have to sell something more than 20,000 units. They have to sell something more than 20,000 units. Oh, but they're looking for 21,000 units, aren't they? Oh, this is not enough. This analysis is not enough. We have to carry on a little bit. This only tells us what the way we left it here is that whatever it is is more than 20,000. Let's finish it up. I, I was being lazy. Let's finish it up. So we have to divide 400 by 19. Let's do it. How many, how many 19s in a 4? Four? 4 has no 19s. 4 has no 19s. That 4 goes and joins the 0, becomes 40. How many 19s in a 14? Uh, in a 40? 40 has two 19s. Two 19s are 38. Two 19s are 38. The remaining two goes and joins the zero becomes 20. How many 19s in a 20? 20 has one 19, and we have a remainder of one. That one is being divided by 19. That one is being divided by 19. Now keep in mind these are all in thousands, because this is this is hundred thousand. We we never use the zeros. These are all in thousands. So it's 21,000 and one nineteenth of a thousand. One twentieth of a thousand is 500. One twentieth of a hundred is five, isn't it? One twentieth of a hundred is five, of course. Therefore, one twentieth of a thousand is going to be uh, five hundred. Is what I said here, because we have twenty-one thousand, not uh, two thousand. We have twenty-one thousand. So one twentieth is going to be about five hundred. Twenty-one thousand five hundred. But even that part, even this part that we just did here was unnecessary. Even this part that we did there is just unnecessary. Right here is our answer. Did, we, did they sell more than 21,000 units? The answer is yes. They must have sold more than 21,000 units if they made a profit. Because to break even, to break even they have to sell 21 and 1 19th of a thousand. To break even is more than 21. To break, if it's more than 21,000 just to break even, then of course they have to sell more than 21,000 to make a profit and the answer is they will have to make around 21,500 units but as I said all of this was unnecessary do you understand? I don't know why I, I, don't know why I went there but this is what is known as break-even analysis let's do the next problem shall we? Number 142. Number 4, 142, we are told that we tossed a coin a number of times. We are not told how many times we sold or tossed the coin. We are told, we, all we are told is that we tossed the coin several times. We are also told that we had four more heads than tails. We had four more heads than tails. There you go. That's our first equation right there. That's our first equation. We had four more heads 
then tell. So whatever number of heads that we had was equal to was equal to the number of tails that we had and then four more than that. The number of tails that we had, if you had four more to it, that's how many heads we had. That's our first equation. The question is how many heads? How many heads? It's a quite straightforward, simple problem. All we are dealing with here are two unknowns, two very simple unknowns, the head, number of heads and number of tails. Since we're dealing with two unknowns, we have to understand right from the very beginning that in order for us to be able to solve for these two unknowns, we have to have two equations. Well, they have given us one equation. If in these two statements that they give, that we're about to look at, if we can find one statement out of those statements, or one equation out of either one of those two statements, then it will do the job. Let's look at first statement. The first statement tells us that we toss for a total of 24 times. Well, there you go. We, we tossed for a total of 21 times, which means the number of heads that we had plus the number of tails that we got must have been 24 because that's how many times we tossed the coin. 24 times we tossed the coin. This is our one equation. This is our other equation right here. Head equals t plus 4. We have two equations, two independent equations to be, to be exact and two unknowns, of course we can solve for the number of heads and number of tails, of course we can solve for the two unknowns. The first statement does the job quite beautifully. A, D, B, C, E. A, D, B, C, E. Now that we established that the first statement by itself is enough, we know now that the answer cannot be B, C or E. It will have to be either A or D. In the real exam, that's it, we are done. We don't have to solve, waste our time to actually solve for anything. But this is not the real exam. We are, we are taking, doing these questions for practice. Therefore, for learning purposes, we're going to carry on and we're going to actually solve it. It only takes a couple of seconds. But even a couple of seconds, don't waste in the real exam. Do you understand? Don't waste even two seconds unnecessarily. Let's do it out. H equals T plus 4. Let's put it in here. So we get T plus 4 plus T equals 24. So we get T plus T, 2T equals 20 and T equals 10. Oh, there you go. T equals 10. Therefore, H must equal 4 more than that, which is 14. 10 and 14, as you can see. Let's look at second. Let's look at the second statement, shall we? First statement, as we can see, does the job quite nicely. Let's look at second statement. In the second statement, they tell us that the heads are worth. We are told that heads are worth three points, and tails are worth one point. Now simply knowing how much the head is worth and how much a tail is worth is not enough unless they give us the total number of points that we generated by tossing those, this coin. And if they give us the total number of points that we generated by tossing the coin, then we again we are home free. Let's see what else they tell us. They go on to tell us that the total number of points equals 52. There you go, that's our other equation. Same thing as before, we have one equation right here, we have another equation right here, two independent equations, two unknown, second statement by itself also does the job, answer this question is D. That's it. As far as the exam is concerned, we are done with this question, do you understand? Again, as always, this is not the real exam, so for learning purposes, we're going to carry on. Purely for learning purposes, this is not something we'll do in the real exam. Let's carry on, shall we? So head equal, heads are equal three points, so if we have h number of heads, if this is how many heads we had, and each head is worth three points, so we'll get three times h number of points. Tails are worth, tails are worth one point. Tails are worth one point, and if we have t number of tails, that's how many points we'll earn from the tails, because each point, each is worth one point. And we are told that the total amount, total number of points that we earn is 52. That's our one equation, that's the other equation, h equals t plus 4, let's put it in here just like before, 3 times h which is t plus 4 plus t, we are told is 52, open the parenthesis, 3 times 3, 3 times 4 is 12, plus t equals 52, we get 3t plus a t, we get 4t equals 52 minus 12, 52 minus 12 is 40. And just like before, we find that t equals 10 and therefore h equals 14. Just like before. The point we are trying to make here is that, as, as I always point out to you, the two statements never contradict each other. They always substantiate each other. 
So if you did your work and you found out that the tails were 10 and heads were 14 from the work that you did in one statement, you find out if you do the work in the, in the one statement, you find out that the Michael is 14 years old and then you do the work based on the second statement, you find out that Michael is something other than 14 years old, something has gone wrong. You have done something wrong either in your work in the second statement or your work in the first statement or there's another possibility, second possibility, which is both of the works that you did in the two statements, they were wrong, but they cannot both be correct. They cannot contradict each other. We found from the first statement that the number of tails was 10 and the number of heads was 14. That's exactly what the second statement tells us right here, as you can see. I'm going to stop right here. My original plan actually was to do the next question also in this, in this video, but uh, I changed my mind because as you, read, as you read the next question, you will see the next question is a really nasty one. I want to do it, I want to do it separately. Do you understand? We'll do it. We'll do number 143 by itself tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.